Hi, in this video I'm going to show how to use the GPU coder to generate code from MATLAB from this Mandelbrot algorithm into CUDA code to execute in the GPU coder. It is an embarrassingly parallel algorithm in which the value of each pixel depends only on that pixel itself and its previous values, so it can easily be parallelized. So GPU, using GPU is very important for deep learning applications, probably the deep learning revolution will not have happened without the GPU, so this is an important skill to learn, and this is a good example to start with. Okay, so let's start showing the, the algorithm that we're going to use. Uh, so here's the algorithm, we compute the initial uh, a complex grid, uh, you can look for more information about, about this fractal algorithm. So you have an initial complex matrix and you're going to have an accumulator complex matrix and count the number of times that the absolute value of the complex number is equal or, or less than 2. And then finally you compute the logarithm for that. Okay, so let's uh, start. Uh, running. This is uh, going to be a test function. This is going to be like the harness for the function. And notice here that we use using TikTok to measure the time uh, around the Mandelbrot and display the time. So we're going to do the same. Uh, we're going to have another single uh, identical test function using the MEX. This is going to be the MEX file that we're going to generate uh, with the GPU folder. So they are the same. And we're going to compare the time of both of them. Okay. So in, in here, uh, we're, we're, I'm going to run it. I'm just going to run it uh, to show you. Okay, so this is the minimum x value and the maximum x value for the Mandelbrot matrix. And the same for y. They're very close numbers to each other. And uh, we're going to use 1,000 separations between them. So you can imagine that this is going to be very small fractions. And the linear space is going to be a, a vector, a 1,000 length vector, and same with y. And by using mesh grid, we create a couple of thousand by thousand matrices in which each of these matrices, this one contains uh, each element correspond uh, contains the value of the x grid. So let's say that you have a uh, an x one by three, and this is one by seven. Then this is gonna be a, a three by seven matrix, and all the val uh, the rows are gonna be one two three one two three, and this one is gonna be uh, all the columns are gonna be one two three four five six seven. Uh, something like that. It's basically so that you can query these two metrics and have the value of the of the corresponding grid. So that's going to be used by the Mandelbrot. And in Mandelbrot, you're going to pass uh, the number of iterations, uh, which is 500, and the x grid, x grid and y grid. Okay, so let's get inside of it. So in here, uh, the first thing to notice is that we're going to use this uh, GPU coder pragma to indicate that we're going to generate GPU code for, for this uh, function. Okay, so using the X grid, uh, we're going to compute the initial matrix, a uh, 1000 by 1000 of complex values, complex double values. So what this says is basically that the for each element, the complex number real value is going to be the value of the X coordinate and the imaginary value is going to be the value of the Y coordinate. So that's going to be the, uh, the initial value for the complex matrix. Okay, so now it's going to create a, co a complex, uh, sorry, uh, a matrix of the count, uh, which is going to be initially set to all ones. So you can see it in here. It's going to be also thousand by thousand. Okay, so now let's create the matrix, the complex matrix for accumulation. Let's run this 500 times. And for each element, this is an element-wise multiplication. So each complex is multiplied, each complex initial element is multiplied by itself. So it's like doing the square of it, and you add the original value to it. This stays the same. So okay, if for each element, and now we're going to have a set of um, a matrix, thousand by thousand matrix of booleans, logical values, in which the cell value is going to be zero if it is not equal or less than two, and one otherwise. So each time it's with uh, the complex absolute value is within those limits, then we're going to increase the count. So finally, uh, once you get the count, of those instances, uh, we're going to uh, compute the log for each element. OK, so let's get out of here. And then finally, once you have the count matrix, you measure the time and use these commands uh, to display the Mandelbrot. Oops. Yeah, so you display this. OK, now let's generate code for this. Uh, 
Okay, so for that, uh, we need the code gen command, which takes three parameters. The configuration, uh, which is uh, uh, basically indicating that, uh, in this case, we're going to generate GP code, so we're going to use GPU config. And this can be options, uh, we have uh, options like creating a static uh, library or shared library, it could be a DLM, it could be an executable, a standalone executable, those are uh, options are better for production. For experimentation, using Amex is more convenient. So uh, there are some flags, you can see the documentation for more options, but we're just gonna use a couple of them, one to generate the report, the code generation report, and the other one for basically that the number, the output numbers of the MEX file matches better the one, the original one. Okay, so the so you have to pass the configuration, you have to pass the name of the function, which is the one that we're gonna generate code for, the Mandelbrot count, and finally the arguments. So you can see that the three arguments for the functions are max iteration, the X grid, and the Y grid that we just saw. And a, one easy way to do this is put within brackets a sample values. Like I just copy paste this from the test. That's very easy, and you just pass it, and it's going to infer the types of, of the function. Uh, but another option, you can use color type of and say, okay, we know that the first value is going to be a scalar, double scalar. This is the uh, the value of an element to infer the base type of the tensor, matrix, or vector. And this is going to be the the array size, uh, the second uh, second third parameter, thousand by thousand. So you can use this and pass it like this. But I found it easy to to do it like this. Okay, now let's generate code for this. It's gonna take a while, so I'm gonna pause this. Okay, it finished. Now we can see the report. Let's take a look at the original code to compare it. Okay, the report is opening. Okay, now let's uh, look at side by side, and this is the name of the function. So you expect the same name to be the entry point in here, which is this one, it's a CUDA file, and the entry point name is going to be the same, mandelbrot.count. The inputs are the same, the inputs are the max iteration, the X grid, Y grid, and the count is the output. Okay, so, so first, a notice that the first part of the algorithm is vectorized form, the middle one is using a for loop, and the final one is vectorized as well. So because of that, is this this is the I think that's the reason why it's divided in three kernels. And notice that the the vectorized statements here are, are going to appear in kernel one, and this logarithm is going to appear in kernel three, while the these middle statements are within the for loop, in that matches this one. So you can look at here that. We have the computation of the initial uh, complex matrix, creation of the accumulate, uh, accumulative uh, matrix, and also the initial count. Then within the for loop, uh, you're using the, the, the ID of the thread to basically make sure that you're not going out of bounds and computing the basically a square of the complex value, element by element, and adding the original one, and comparing against is less or equal to two, and Increase the count and finally using the logarithm in the third kernel. Okay, yeah, so that's it. Uh, the CUDA generation went fine. So now let's try to see how fa fast it is. First, uh, let's run uh, the the original one to see how how it goes. Uh, it takes a while. Yeah. One, two, three. It's like four seconds. Okay, so it's four seconds in total. Let's run it uh, with the max. You see that it's the same, but it will max. Okay, now let's run it immediately. So it's, let, let's compute the speed up. Okay. So it's a, around 13 times faster than the original code, which is worth uh, using the GPU for. Okay, thank you very much uh, for watching.